Welcome YouTube animators and artists. If you've been following this channel for a while, you know by now that one of the things I like to do is to add realistic animations to movie clips or other film items. In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate an image, but first remember to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell, which will help me to continue bringing you these tutorial videos. I'm going to make and insert a realistic 2D animation of a T-Rex dinosaur trampling onto the scene. You will need a photo editor. I use NCH PhotoPad Editor. This step can be one of the most tedious parts depending on how realistic you want your animation to be. If all you want to do is a simple animation where the image is warped or reshaped, then you're done, and the image can be used as is. But if you want a more realistic animation, as I'm showing you here, the image will need to be decomposed into a subset of separate images accounting for each movable part of the character. Some anatomy knowledge can pay off here. Obviously we want the T-Rex jaw to move since it is going to eat Barbie, but also the T-Rex is going to be trampling onto the scene, so we need to decompose all of the other movable parts as well. Using the Select Polygon tool, we will cut out the entire dinosaur except for the desired movable part. Define the border of the body part with the Polygon tool, keeping in mind that the body part will have to overlap with the other adjacent body parts. For the animation to work properly, it is best to cut out each part, including the joints that they rotate on. This means that the saved images of two adjacent body parts will both contain the same joint on their own image. There's one thing to note here since the animation is two-dimensional. Once you have cut out the images for one leg and one arm, you do not need to cut out the other leg and arm, because you can duplicate the ones you already have and place them either in front of the dinosaur or behind the dinosaur accordingly when the images are recomposed. Make sure you save the images as PNG files so that they are transparent except where the body part lies on the image. Once you've completed this step, you'll have a folder of images that are ready to be recomposed in the animation software. This step is where your image will come to life. I use Moho Pro and I would argue that this is the best software for this type of work. You can import all of the images at once, and as you can see, the dinosaur is reconstructed simply by importing all of the images. Now the fun begins. Rigging characters is often the most tedious part of this process, but also the most fun if you do it right. Remember when you are doing any character setup in Moho, it has to be done at frame zero. To get the most realistic result, first you'll want to apply a smart warp layer to each image layer before rigging the bone structure. The software may or may not associate the warp layer to the image layer. So once the warp layer is added, test the association at frame 1. The points should distort the image when they are moved. If they don't, you need to open the image layer, go to the image tab, and check the warp using bones box, and select the correct smart warp layer at the bottom. You need to do this for each body part. At frame 0, fit the points to the shape as good as possible and add more reference points as needed. You may also want to add reference points inside the body part depending on the effect you are trying to achieve. In the case of this dinosaur, I want it to look like the skin stretches and contracts as body movement occurs. So I will add reference points inside the body part for some of the images, namely the torso, tail, and legs because this is where the majority of the movement will occur and where skin stretching would be seen on a moving animal. Most of this effect will be achieved by animating the points that are on or near the joints of the bone structure. You can easily see in the finished product how the skin stretches and contracts as the bones are manipulated. Keep in mind that the more points there are, the more taxing it is on your equipment, but the effect is definitely worth some extra points if you can manage it. Next. You will add bones to the character and rig the reference points to the bones. The better you cut out the body parts at the pivot areas, the easier the rigging process will be. This is why some anatomy knowledge is helpful. For additional help on rigging, I will post another rigging video for beginners. Sketch out your bones according to the creature's anatomy and how you believe the parts will rotate. Once the bones are placed, it is time to bind the points to the bones. In Moho, there is a Bind Layers tool and a Bind Points tool. The Bind Layer tool is great for simple animations, but for this project, we're going to use the Bind Points tool. This will allow the bones to manipulate other areas of the dinosaur as needed, as in the skin stretching effect. Working with one bone at a time, select all of the points that the bone needs to move, and bind them to the bone. 
Rigging can be tricky, so you may need to add or take away reference points as you work your way through all of the bones and points. Keep in mind that all of the points need to be bound to something, otherwise a piece of the dinosaur won't move with the animation. Once all of the bones and points are accounted for, you can start testing the rig. Manipulate all of the bones to see if you missed anything or to fix anything that malfunctioned in the process. At this point, you may notice that the dinosaur doesn't move as realistically as you would like and that the skin stretching effect isn't very good. This is okay because you can clean things up with some final touches in the rigging process. Moho allows you to create animation actions to clean up the movement of the body parts. Start the final touches by adding the necessary actions for each bone. Actions allow you to specify how the points move when the bone is manipulated, so you can clean things up and build the movement effects that you want. Once you have completed the actions for all of the bones, set the bone constraints for each bone. This makes it easier to animate and prevents the character from bending in undesired ways. While you're at it, you may want to mark the independent angle setting for some of the bones, like the tail bones, so the tail doesn't move up and down when the dinosaur body is manipulated. Finally, add a target bone to the second to last bone on each foot. This allows you to designate when you want the dinosaur's feet to be stationary during stomping or stepping, and it makes the animation process much easier and realistic. The fun continues as you bring the character more and more to life by adding movement. Manipulate the bones at various keyframes throughout the timeline to animate the character. I will post a timeline animation video for beginners if you want more in-depth information on animating and working with the timeline. As you manipulate the character, be sure to make good use of the target bones at the feet. It makes the animation process much more efficient. A nice final touch for the animation is adding the dinosaur shadow. You can do this by duplicating the dinosaur layer as a reference layer and scaling the layer upside down. But don't forget to colorize the layer as black. Otherwise, the shadow will have all the colors of the dinosaur. Once the animation is complete, export the animation as a PNG video so everything except the dinosaur is transparent. Export the shadow layer as a separate file. And that is the final product. Hope you enjoyed this video. Visit my channel for more animation videos and tutorials.